Welcome to the God Only Encouraging Message and Prayer Series. Messages from the Heart of God to let you know you can come confidently and boldly to the throne of grace to receive mercy for your failures and find grace to help in good time for every need. That appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when you need it. God knows everything you need before you ask him. That's what he tells you in Matthew 6, 8. So you can come boldly to his throne of grace when your heart's broken and when you need to be made whole by the power of the living God living through you and living in you, sewing up and wrapping around you his love to hurts and feelings and purposes that have just suffered through man and through situations and circumstances so that you know God loves you beyond a shadow of a doubt. God's passionate love for you is demonstrated in the price he paid to receive you to himself through Jesus Christ. And he paying such a great price, he wants you to experience his love in you, especially if you have a broken heart, especially if you're going through discouragement and you need to have a calm in your heart and your mind that surpasses all understanding. He becomes your personal encourager, your personal comforter, and he wants to make you completely whole today. He wants you to receive his gift of love already operating in you and penetrating every atom of your being. And he wants you to know that you are loved by him and that your body and your soul and your spirit, they yearn for God. If you're a born again believer, God living in you wants you to feel and know and experience his love that he paid a, such a great price for you to experience. He literally tells you that in Ephesians 2.18. He says, I want you to experience the great width and the length and the depth and the height of my great love for you. So his passionate love can make you whole. He knows that he's faithful to every promise he's made to you. And even though you don't see those promises maybe being clear to you or being accomplished in your life, you can be assured because God loves you and paid such a great price for you and he highly values you and you know he highly values you and the reason you know is because he tells you that in Romans 8.30 that he literally paid a high price. He paid a special treasure price for you, his son. And in doing so, that means that you are a high value to God. And when you look at God's value system, that's not an earthly value system. That's a heavenly value system that only God knows the true value of. So whatever the worth is you can think of on earth and the highest worth is higher than that. It's infinite more worth than that. It's transcending more worth than that. God truly values you and he wants you to know that you are special to him and that he loves you and that he wants you to know that he's the healer of your broken heart. He's the healer of those things that are causing you discomfort comfort. He's the one has been with you all this time. And if you're listening to this conversation that I'm having with you right now, it means that God has already pulled you through so many things. You can't even imagine it. And you look back on your life and you say, oh, you notice he was in that person that came and helped you. He was in that person that gave you a comforting word or maybe somebody who did something nice for you. He was with that person who gave you an opportunity that you didn't know where that opportunity was going to come from. He was with that person that sat there and came in and gave you finances or resources that you needed or maybe something you needed that you didn't know where it was going to come from. He provided for it through a person or situation or circumstance. Who do you think was the master person behind that who had planned all your days and written them in his book and had people coming to your aid and support all the time? It's God. It's because he knows that if you ever focus on him and get your eyes off the world and you see that he really truly, as he said to Jesus, I'm working all the time in John five seventeen, He's working for you all the time right now. And he wants you to see that he's working for you. He's wanting you to see that he loves you. He's wanting you to see that he makes all things new to you because you are a new creation. You're a new creation that never existed before. He recreated you without sin. That old nature of yours has sin. But this new nature, which is a born-again nature filled with the Spirit of God, and dwelt by the Spirit of God, that's the home of the Spirit of God, no, it doesn't have sin because the Spirit of God couldn't be in there. So what happens is your body 
is now the temple of the living God. And so God living in you has quite the resources to heal your broken heart, to make you feel comfortable and make you feel at peace and at ease. And he says, let me do it. Let me do it. You've been looking at all things through men and through what ever around you can provide to you. You've been looking for peace and joy and comfort in people. And I am your peace. I am your joy. I am your love. I'm anything that you need. He says, you feel like you need love. I am love. He says, you feel like you need joy and happiness in your life. I am joy. And my joy will give you strength. That's what he says in Nehemiah 8.10. Then he says, do you need peace? Well, he says, listen, I'm the prince of peace. I am peace. And peace is living in you. And my peace I give to you, not as the world gives it to you. It's, he, Jesus told you in John 14, 26, he says, I give you my peace. that surpasses all understanding, as he says in Philippians 4, 7. He says, listen, it surpasses all understanding because the prince of peace lives in you. And my peace in you is greater than the world's discomfort and dissatisfaction around you. And I am the one who truly satisfies because you will never be satisfied with life until you know that your satisfaction is found in God and Christ alone. God is the one who created you to be satisfied with him. And the way he did that is before you were ever born, he and the Son and the Holy Spirit had a meeting and they decided what they would do on planet Earth before they created planet Earth and all the things that would be happening. That's If you want to read about it, just listen to what he tells you in Psalms 139. He tells you, I know everything about you. I know the words you're going to speak before you speak them. I know everything you're going to think before you think it. I know all the days you're going to have before you have them. He's telling you, they planned it all before you knew that you were going to be here. And they planned every day. So if they put all that detail into thinking about you, that means they love you and they want the best for you. And they want you to see that they are working all around you all the time. And you are missing it. You're just missing it. You don't have to ask God to help you. He's already helping you when you ask him. And you just need to recognize the help that he's sending to you and get your eyes off the world and situations and circumstances around you that you keep focusing on the problem. You keep focusing on why you don't feel well. You keep focusing on why people hurt you, how people have hurt you. Look at how they hurt Jesus. And then he tells you in Hebrews 12 too, he says, I don't. I got hurt, but I don't look at my hurts. I don't look at my suffering. I look at what God was doing through me, the great love he's showing with me to be able to receive you back to ourselves and restore you back to the original innocence you had so that you can see yourself as we intended for you to see yourself and as we created you to see yourself and not as the world describes you. Listen, you're a child of the living God. You're not a child of the world. He literally tells you, you have a new address. Your citizenship is in heaven. And then having that citizenship in heaven, that means that you now are a child of the living God and a member of his own household, as it tells you in Ephesians 2.19. Listen, you're not the old person you used to be. So you have to understand. The enemy tries to bring up videos of what that person looked like and what people around you have always acted like and how you see people and things. And he throws those fiery darts at you to get you to believe that's who you are and how those people respond to you. But instead, God gives you that shield of faith. He gives you that divine persuasion of the Holy Spirit to persuade you. What the enemy says is false, and what I, the spirit of truth, tell you is true, because I am the spirit of truth. I am God himself, because God's the spirit, as he tells you in John 4, 24, and his spirit is the Holy Spirit, and he's the very spirit of Christ, as he tells you in Romans 8, 9. So they're all three spirits, and you're born of that spirit, so you're a new spirit being. So now receive and operate in all that God has given you as a born-again believer, a new believer, a new spirit being that never existed before, living in your body, which is the temple of the living God, because the Spirit of God living in you has joined you to Him, and you're one with Him, and you're not who you used to be. That's just Colossians 3 3. He says, You were co crucified with Christ. You died with Christ, and now your life is hidden with Christ in God. That means nobody's going to snatch you out of God's hands. And He tells you that twice in John 10 28 and 29. And then in verse 30, He says, Jesus and them are one. 
So what you have to recognize is that you being in Christ Jesus, you are not who you used to be. That means that the enemy's weapons don't truly work against you unless you give him a gateway by looking to the world and not to God. The satisfaction that you're going to find in life will only come by looking at God. As a matter of fact, all the satisfaction you need in life will only come from looking at God. He's the only one that can truly satisfy you because he, only he can satisfy you. Then it's him that helps you and guides you and directs you. And he's the one that wants you to rely and trust and depend on him. And when you do, then all of a sudden, you start recognizing he's around you. I've heard people sit there and teach and say, hey, you just need to depend completely on God. Well, let me tell you something. If you've been strained by the world, that's going to be difficult to do. But what God will do is that if you just look to God, it's what Jesus said in Hebrews 12. He says, fix your eyes on me. Did you notice how easy that is? Look away from the world and the situations that are going on in the world around you, the things that are concerning you and stressing you, distressing, causing you to worry, it's breaking your heart because of what people are doing around you and doing to you. Quit looking at that. Jesus was that broken-hearted person. He was broken and he suffered in such a great degree you can't even imagine it for you. He didn't have to do that. He did it for you as if you're the only person in the whole earth that he had to do it for because he loved you so much. You know why he did it? It's that when you go through these situations and circumstances, you depend on him. And the way you depend on him is this. You recognize, Lord, you're living in me and the problems around me are hurting me and I don't know how to deal with it. You know what? That's a prayer of dependence. And God will answer that prayer. He will move heaven and earth to show you. And because you looked to him and went, didn't go to your buddy, your friend, or somebody and say, hey, I really don't know what to do here. Can you help me? Well, you're going to a finite individual asking about a spiritual problem that's being caused by a spirit who's attacking you. And then you're wanting an earthly solution for a spiritual problem that only God can give. So that doesn't even make much sense. You go to your father to the Lord Jesus Christ and expect the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God himself, to help you. They are interceding on your behalf already, as he tells you in Romans 8. So they know what you need. They know what will be the beneficial for you. They know what the answer to the problem is. And they want you to see that they've already done it for you. And it's operating around you. But the enemy's keeping your eyes off of this answer so that you only see the problem and you can't see what God's doing. So I'm telling you, 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 tells you he's blinding you. He's shielding you from seeing what it is God's doing. Believe me, you can sit there and believe and have people tell you things that aren't true. And God's telling you, the truth is, I gave my son for you. If I gave my son for you, I love you. If I love you, I'm taking care of you. If you're looking at the things around the world and you've been trusting the world and you've gotten in trouble because you've trusted the world and you wanted your happiness to come from the world, then what you do is you change the direction in which you're focusing. You focus on me because being a new spirit being and me being the spirit, I told you in Ephesians 2, 4, that because of my mercy and the great love in which I have for you, that I'm the one who chose for you to come and be born in this world to satisfy my love for me. So how do you think you're going to satisfy your love? And how are you going to satisfy your joy? How are you going to satisfy your peace? Only by looking to him. He is your joy. He's your peace. And he is love itself. So when you look for things in all the wrong places, you get the wrong result. So if you're living and you're stressing and you're discomfort and you're brokenhearted, well, guess what? You've been looking for things in the wrong places. And that's a tough thing to say. I've been there. I own the t-shirt. I understand. But he has to mend your broken heart. When he wraps you around with his love, he says, I love you. You're special to me. I don't want you looking to the things of the world. I want you to look into me. I will bring the people across your path that you need to be associated with. I'll bring the situations, the circumstances across your path you need. Quit trying to manipulate it and quit trying to make force things that I haven't done for you. Trust me, and I'm already getting you out of the message you've created because I love you, because that's what a good daddy does. At the same time, I want you to see what good I've put around you. 
you're sort of like the prodigal child where you sit there and you look that, oh, you've gotten all these things. You've taken all of daddy's riches and all the things that you wanted. But then you've gone out into the world. And you can't figure out why the world got on you and why you're broke and why you're discarding and why you're discouraged. It's because you're living in the world. Come back home to the Father. Let the Father heal you and mend that broken heart. Let the Father heal you who loves you. And he's actually got his arms wrapped around you right now, whether you realize it or not. Because who do you think has been protecting you from yourself so that you can actually hear this message and actually know that God is for you and with you and around you and among you and loving you. And he wants you to know that he has his absolute best available to you. And it's available to you right now. You don't have to ask him for it. He's a good father that's providing it for you. He didn't tell you that when you pray that you have to ask him a lot of things. He just sat there and said, recognize that I'm the one who's already provided it for you. And that's what Jesus was teaching in the Lord's Prayer. He told you in verse 8 of Matthew 6, your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. So then you just thank him for giving you your daily bread. Father, I just thank you for giving me everything that I need in life. I thank you for blessing these who are listening with every spiritual blessing, the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that you wish above all things that they should prosper, be in health, even as their souls prosper. And you make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to them in abundance so that they are furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation and have plenty left over to give to the aid and support of others that brings glory to your holy, holy, holy name. In Jesus' name. Did you recognize that that was just scripture? Just scripture. Ephesians 1, 3, uh, 3 John 2, and then 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Those are scripture prayers that God will honor because he's already done it for you. His grace has already been given to you. His love's already been given to you. His blessings have already been given to you. So now you need to walk in the comfort of of the blessings and the great love he's given you and he's wrapping you around with right now and love God by saying, I love you, Father. I love you, Father God. And when you do, your eyes have been taken off the world. Your eyes are put on him. And once you know and experience his love for you, then what happens that one little I love you will keep your eyes more and more focused on him more and more and more. Because once you see him moving, it's just by nature that he put in you that you want to see him moving more. So because you haven't seen him moving, I'm praying, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that they will see you moving, that you make them whole, and that you would show them that they are of great value to you and great value in the kingdom, and that you love them and you have the best in store for them by simply seeing what you've already done, by placing them in the body of Christ and making them so valuable that only you can know their true worth in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Until next time, remember, God loves you. I love you. And Jesus Christ is Lord. And he's the Lord that comes to live in you. And he will help you in every situation and circumstance. He didn't die just for your sins. He died to live in you. And now your life is hidden with him. And he is your life. So let him live his life through you and quit trying to help him. It'll sure help you out in life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.